So I have to stand up because I need to do stuff with my hands here. Anyway, first thing you need, coffee beans. Whole preferably from a local or trusted source. Fresh, which means within two weeks of the, its roasting. Um, this is ideal time that coffee beans hold its oils. It gives off prodigious amounts of CO2 the longer you have them. So you want to store them in an airtight container. I use light or medium. The darker the roast, the longer it has cooked and the more oils it has let out. And set, hence, a weaker coffee with less complexity and less caffeine when you have a darker roast. So this is medium, I believe. Next thing you'll need is a burr grinder. I have it back there, but I don't want to take it out because it's a lot of hassle. So a burr grinder is a grinder that grinds with these stones that slow spin. This means that the grounds will ground evenly and making a more consistent cup. The grinder grinds slow so the grinder doesn't actually transfer heat to the beans, which actually starts the heating process of the beans, which give off the beans flavors, etc, etc, etc. So you don't want that because you want all that the bean has to offer. You also need a gram scale. This is a weight measure for the coffee beans, amount of coffee for each cup. Too much coffee grounds, extraction will be uneven. Too little coffee grounds, it'll taste like water. We don't want either of that. The bitter taste in coffee is not due to too much coffee, so don't underbrew, which means don't put too little coffee bean grounds. So next you need to choose your brewing method. There are multiple brewing methods, uh, many of which I know are the pour over, which is the Hario method, the Chemex, the Aeropress, the French press, the vacuum pot, and espresso. I'm going to actually be using the pour over or the Hario method with the V60. This is the V60. This V60 method gives off an even body and flavor. I'll explain those um, coffee lingual later. You're going to need this, which is the pourer, and you're going to need a filter, a special filter. Filter is made for that. I'll talk about that in a few seconds. You're going to need you're going to need a cup like the or a holder of coffee like this. You're also going to need of course a measuring cup to measure exactly 400 milligram milliliters of water. I'll tell you why later. And you're going to need a decanter or craft for aerating the, the coffee later. I'll tell you about that more. And then you're going to need cups of course, right? Just to drink the coffee. Fancy glass cups. Everything's glass here. <laughs> now I'm going to go quickly into how to make the coffee. We're going to get 400 milliliters of water. This is about uh, 12 ounces, say this 13.5 ounces, etc. We're going to need extra water to preheat these glass containers because if we don't preheat these glass containers, we're going to lose some heat from the water that we're pouring through the coffee grounds, which will lose the uh, ability to get the extraction of the coffee oils. So we don't want that. We're going to use this. Oh, I forgot to mention. We're going to, we need a pourer. This has a really, really good nozzle so that you can pour an even pour. This is a problem that I had earlier in my previous video to make OK coffee. 400 milliliters of water. We're going to pour it inside. And we're going to heat this up to 205 degrees. This is the perfect extraction temperature for the coffee grounds. If you put it too much, the coffee grounds are going to burn and you're going to have that burnt taste in your mouth and you don't want that. Too little and you're not going to get the good extraction out of the coffee and you're going to taste pretty much water. I'm heating up the water. I've got an extra preheated water. What I'm going to need to do is actually clean these filters just in case. It's always a precaution. You don't want to have a dirty filter. So we're going to fold this right here. I'm going to fold this like this so that it actually fits well into these things. These are specially made for these pourers. We're going to fit this in and we're going to pour in the water. All right, now that everything is wet on the filter, we've also made it hot water. So we're actually doing a killing two birds with one stone. We're heating up this glass container and we wet that. So we're going to pour this water that's already heating up this piece of glass. And we're going to pour it into here to heat up this piece of glass. Two birds with one stone. Now what we're going to do is we're going to actually ground the coffee. We need to ground the coffee right when we're going to make the coffee because we actually want it to be fresh. Now what we're going to do is we're going to get the coffee grounds to be about table salt consistency. So we're going to want to make it that big. We're going to actually use this to pour it in. Alright, table salt consistency on my coffee. I'm going to turn on my ground scale. It's zeroing out. You don't actually want just two scoops, you want exactly about 20 to 21 grams of coffee for four, 400 milliliters of water. So that's exactly it. Taking this off and I'm pouring it in here. Making it nice and even. Pouring this on here. 
putting this on here so that I can know exactly how much water I'm pouring at the same time when I make my coffee. I also forgot we're going to need a thermometer so that we can make sure the coffee is 205 degrees. So this is a nice thermometer. The most ideal coffee temperature is around 190 to 205, so that's perfect. So now I'm going to actually have to hold the camera so that I can show you the grounds and I am pouring. I'm going to want about a three to four minute extraction because that is about where the optimum time for coffee extraction is. So we're going to pour 50 milliliters of water around first to let the coffee grounds bloom. We need to have it nice and wet so that we can get all the extraction out of the coffee grounds to get all the oils etc etc. I went a little over 60 milligrams but that's kind of hard to get exactly at 50 milligrams. We're talking about a 30 second bloom time here uh, that's to get the prime amount of blooming out of the coffee grounds. While we're waiting here I'm going to talk a little bit about boldness and flavor and actually also aroma. Boldness is about how thick or thin it tastes in your mouth. You get a bold taste. It's really thick kind of like milk or a thinness like water. Uh, and then you have the flavor which is like citrusy or lemony or milky or chocolatey. These are the types of things that you're talking about when you're talking about flavor. Also with aroma, except for aroma you're actually smelling the coffees. 100 more milligrams in and we're gonna let it extract a little longer and now we're gonna do in a clockwise circle we're gonna pour and we want it about up to three-fourths high. We don't want any higher than that. So that's high as... And we want to pour at a very even pour. It's very, very difficult to do this one-handed. But I'm trying. And we're going to want to do that until we have pretty much no water left, which is about right now. So I'm at good time. We want to see this spinning motion to ensure that all the grounds are extracting evenly. Now we're aiming for a three to four minute extraction, remember that. If you really want to get good coffee grounds or coffee beans, you can go to Lines Coffee, which is downtown. They roast their own beans and they have really good sources. Also, if you want to learn about how to taste coffee, I kind of try trying to learn about how to do that. It's actually quite complicated and it's a really long and arduous process so I don't know if you really want to know about that but it's a thing that I'm interested in, and maybe you might be interested in maybe you want to actually learn how to taste coffee you actually have to learn how to do that which is kind of weird here we're just watching for the coffee to go down at the same time and nice and even and watching that it's actually still spinning very slowly but it's actually still spinning which is a really good sign if you want, I could actually show you the French press method if you want me to in another video. Uh, it's actually pretty hard, not actually quite as easy as everybody thinks it is. Hopefully there's other people watching this other than just me and you and yeah. If there are, um, I'd love a comment on the video that you got this far in the video. It's pretty boring. It's really just for coffee lovers. So back to that, yeah. We've seen the coffee brew. Uh, this is done. We want to see this nice even coating around the edges. And we saw that it went all down at the same time. You can slightly see that there's a circular motion on here. That's perfect. Now we've got the caref right here, or decanter if you will. We're going to take the perfectly brewed coffee. Well, not perfectly, but quite good. And we're going to pour it in here. And I said, remember, this is to aerate the coffee grounds. I mean, co the coffee. This is to give it more air in it to make it so that you can have a cleaner taste in your coffee. We're going to spin like this. And we're going to pour it back so that we can serve it well. This is about 400 mill milliliters of coffee. And this goes right in here.